So, Mike, let's talk about Zach Wilson now, because obviously, you know, you can't talk Jets and not talk about this rookie quarterback second overall. I want to go back to your initial film study of Wilson going through, you know, some of the analytical numbers that you guys do at Jets X Factor. Now that you have had months to accept the fact he's the Jets quarterback, he's the guy we all know Wilson will be opposite Sam Darnold opening day. What is it about Zach Wilson's skill set that makes you the most excited uh, about what he could potentially bring to this offense? I think for me, the biggest thing uh, with Zach Wilson is that I think he, I think like you said, I think he's a good fit in this offense. I think the things he does well complements. And this is another thing that the Jets mentioned. Um, I, I believe it was Michael Floor said it, or actually Robert Salas said this, um, that on his film, you see him making throws that they're going to be asking him to make. I think in this offense, a lot of the things he does well, um, his ball placement and, this is something that Robbie talked about uh, from seeing him at practice, his ability to sort of vary his velocity. You know, he could put heat on the ball if he needs to throw a laser and stick it in there. Um, but he could also take, you know, some velocity off of it. So it has enough touch to loft in there and drop in at the perfect time. Um, so those are a couple of things that I think are going to fit on some of the throws. He'll be making this offense, whether it's crossing routes um, a lot of stuff over the middle that will be, you know, promoting yards after the catch, kind of like the Niners did for their receivers. Um, and also um, Sam Cernick, who does some film breakdowns for us at Jets X Factor, he had uh, posted this really awesome clip comparing the throw that Wilson made it at his pro day, um, where he rolled out, kind of threw it off his back foot um, to a receiver breaking deep in the opposite direction is something that's in the Niners playbook. And we've seen uh, Aaron Rodgers throw that, make that throw for the Packers with Matt LaFleur. And we saw Jimmy Garoppolo make that throw a few times with the Niners uh, under Mike LaFleur's passing game over the past few years. So it's applicable stuff. I think what he does is uh, NFL applicable because there were a lot of tight window throws on his tape. Yeah, the competition wasn't great, but throwing into a tight window is throwing into a tight window. I think no matter what uniform you're wearing or the other guy's wearing, if you're fitting it into a tight window, you're fitting it into a tight window. So on an overall level, I feel like the things he does are very NFL applicable. The quickness of his release, his accuracy into tight windows, his touch, his anticipation, his ability to begin his windup for receivers, make their break for the windows actually there to throw it into the window before it opens. NFL applicable stuff, but also a lot of the concepts that he was excelling with, uh, I think match up with what the Jets are going to be running. So um, going into the draft, I was definitely um, – higher on Justin Fields than I think the NFL ended up being on him. I was, I was pretty close with them. I like Justin Fields a lot um, between Wilson and Fields, but ultimately I think uh, for the Jets needs schematically, I think Wilson makes a lot of sense. And so far it does look like uh, comparing the talk around both guys and their respective training camps that Wilson does have an edge over him and probably Trey Lance as well. So um, it does seem like Wilson is, the guy that made the most sense for them. This is the Jake Asman show. My name is Jake Asman. He's Michael Nania. You could, uh, of course, find his work at jetsxfactor.com and listen to his podcast, The Cool Your Jets Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe below. It goes a long way to helping my channel continue to grow. Please like this video as well. So, Michael, as far as expectations now then for Zach Wilson, statistically speaking, what do you expect from him during his rookie season? Yeah, it, it's it's tough to project. I think it really comes down to how the rest of the team supports him. If this offensive line is, you know, average to good, somewhere in that range, then he could have a really solid rookie season. But you know, if he has to deal with a bunch of obstacles in terms of injuries in the O-line, bad protection, injuries at receiver, um, then, you know, maybe the expectation shouldn't be as high. But the biggest thing for me whenever thinking about rookie production at quarterback is that, I think you need to keep expectations as low as possible because for the most part, rookie quarterbacks don't play well. It's really hard. It's very rare. You see a rookie quarterback who's a good and above average NFL starter. Justin Herbert did it last year, but he was, he had the most productive rookie season of all time. And he still probably wasn't even a top 10 quarterback last season. So it's really hard for rookie quarterbacks to play well. And a lot of times you see rookie quarterbacks with very bad seasons go on, to have great careers. Josh Allen did it, Carson Wentz and Jared Goff. Uh, well, Jared Goff isn't good now, but he did make it to a Super Bowl, have some productive years. Um, it, it takes a long time. You got to be patient 
with these guys. We saw a little wave over the uh, in recent history with guys coming onto the scene really quickly that raised our expectations a little bit, but it's still a position you got to be patient with. So um, obviously you don't want him to be awful. You don't want to watch that. It's not promising, but I think no matter – a guy can struggle as a rookie, and it's not going to change his – future outlook that much as long as he shows you promise uh, and has a few games throughout the season moments throughout the season where he shows you tangible potential but I do think Wilson has a chance to have an above average rookie season above average for a rookie I think I think he could hit 20 touchdowns keep the picks lower than 12 maybe in that 10 range so I could see 20 touchdown 10 picks or a rookie season for him um but We'll see what happens. I think the biggest thing is to keep in mind is don't have your expectations too high. No matter how much he struggles, he can't still turn it around. He's only a rookie. Most rookies struggle a lot. So just that's important to remember. I actually placed a bet on Zach Wilson at plus 850 to win rookie of the year. I thought, you know what? Those are pretty good odds. I, I think the Jets offense is going to be built towards him maybe having some really good statistics as a rookie. So going off of that, Michael, as far as the situation that Wilson's coming into, we all know for three years, Sam Darnold was not put in the best situation to have long-term success. Sam might not be any good. We will find out going forward, but we still don't definitively know who what Sam Darnold is because they gave him Todd Bowles, Adam Gase, bad offensive line, bad weapons. Every Jeff fan watching this knows. So as far as Wilson's situation, um, give me your take on just how much better it is, obviously, than Darnold's situation and you know, specifically the line and receivers, how they fit what Wilson can bring to this offense. Yeah, I think it's it, it's substantially better. Um, and the, the depth is the biggest thing, I think. When you look at the wide receiver position, um, they go six deep with guys who are you know solid options. Braxton Barrios is probably your sixth best receiver right now. Keelan Cole, fifth, Jamison Crowder, fourth, um, or at least in terms of how the death chart might line up. Even Mims could be your fourth or fifth guy if it plays out that way. Um, So the death is a lot better. You're not going to see games where, you know, the Jets are missing one receiver, two receivers, even three receivers, and have to throw out Andre Roberts, Sharon Peak, Rashard Matthews. Chris um, Hogan. Chris Chris Hogan Hogan. started opening day last year. He's playing lacrosse right now, Michael. Yeah, so it's – the death was so bad guys. You lose one or two guys and you're down to playing lacrosse players, punt returners, guys who aren't <laughs> even in the NFL right now. Um, but now you could lose three receivers and you could still put Braxton Berrios, Corey Davis and Elijah Moore on the field. And that's pretty good um, for having that many players out. And it's really important to have that because guys are going to get hurt. It happens to every team every year. You never throw out, you know, your best 22 every single game every week. So you need to have um, backups who can help you at least stay afloat when guys get hurt. Your backups are always going to be worse to some extent. That's why they're backups and the starters are starters. But you want the drop-off to be as small as possible. When your drop-off is the 2018 Bears game and you're throwing out a team of guys who are all not even in the league two years later, except Roberts because he's a bun returner, um, you're not going to be able to do anything in that situation. But if you can lose some starters and still put out Barrios, who's okay. And, you know, and still have, you know, other starting caliber players throughout there, you're going to be okay, no matter what happens. Uh, And I think that's, what's important. Then on the offensive line, it's just markedly better. Becton is better than Beecham. Vera Tucker is better than Carpenter. McGovern is much better. Even though McGovern struggled last year, much better than Jonathan Harrison, Spencer Long, um, at right guard, we'll see what happens there. Uh, they're not, uh, they haven't proven they're better than Brian Winters at that spot yet, I don't think. Um, and then Morgan Moses or jo- uh, George Fan, I think, is better than Brandon Shell. So, um, they're substantially better on the O line. The wide receiver depth is better. Um, tight end isn't necessarily better right now, although I think the blocking could be better with Tyler Croft and Wesco in there than Darnold's rookie season. Um, and then at running back, I think they have some potential. Obviously, Darnold had Le'Veon Bell. Um, in 2019 and a little bit of last year, but that didn't uh, turn out well at all. And I think this running back group has the potential to all these guys combined. I think you have a little bit of everything you need. You have some receiving ability with Coleman home run ability with Carter. Ty Johnson has patience and vision and is good, consistent chunk gainer. Who's a good fit in a wide zone scheme. P Ryan brings a little bit of power. Um, 
I like Josh Adams. We'll see if he makes the team. He's pretty elusive, a good breaker, uh, tackle breaker. Um, Carter also can pass block, so he's good on third down. Um, so I think this running back group is all the skills you want, just combined between all these guys. Whereas the past few years, I feel like it was, first of all, last year was terrible outside of Bell. You'd Frank or um, carrying most of the carries. That's obviously bad. And then when Bell was here, you know, as talented as he was coming in, now we know that, you know, maybe it wasn't just all offensive line. It, maybe he did lose some gas because it was just Bell, Bell, Bell. There wasn't a lot of creativity or mixing it up. Now I feel like this group offers a lot of ability to mix and match and do creative things and keep guys fresh and rotate guys in and out throughout the game. So I think running back has been upgraded as well compared uh, to Darnold's tenure. So overall, um, he's Zach Wilson is definitely supported much better than Darnold was.